Hello planty people, I am Empress Eri and I am back and I am here for another how to take care of your plants video today slash we're going to cover everything for this genus in one video so that hopefully if you've been struggling with it or yours just isn't quite doing what you want, uh, we can solve the problem in this video. If I don't cover something that you were hoping to have answered about this plant, please pop it down in the comments and I will do my best to answer the question for you. Uh, so if you haven't read the title of this video or you missed the lovely image at the start, this video is about string of hearts succulents. Uh, I'm going to put the, this is its scientific name right there um and it is uh, one that also comes in a string of spades so it's a slightly different shape uh, if you do not know what i'm talking about it is these ones that i have dangling all around the room behind me now i have a lot of string of hearts it's a bit hard to kind of uh show them properly on the camera but i will do a little uh handheld playthrough of what they are in just a moment so you can have a closer look at them. But these are a string of hearts. They are a beautiful trailing plant. They are of the succulent genus and uh, they are very easy to take care of. They're easy to propagate uh, if you get them right. Uh, they can have a few little tricks that makes them a little bit of a pain in the butt, but today I am going to go through what I do to take care of mine and what has been, as you can see, very successful for a lot of growth. Uh, the last time I measured one of these when I accidentally broke the string off, it was well over two and a half meters of like strings. And then I had to propagate it because I accidentally got it caught in something and broke it. But it's so easy to propagate. Uh, I will show you that as well. There are lots of different, different ways you can propagate your string of hearts. And so we're gonna go through all of those things today. First of all, of all, here is some timestamps. So those timestamps will uh, go through everything that I'm going to be covering in this video today. Uh, so if you need to skip ahead or you've already watched it and you need to go back to something, here is all of the information for you to go back to later. Alrighty, so I'm going to stop with the little intro and we're going to jump into the video. Firstly, though, if you like my shirt or you want to check out my other planty merch or just my merch in general, check out the links in the description. And here is Murphy. Because is it one of my videos if one of my cats don't stop in to say hello? Say hi, Murph. <laughs> Alright, let's get into it, shall we? I'm just going to do a little bit of a handheld go through and try and show you some of my string of hearts in a little bit of a close up. Uh, this one here hiding in the mist of the humidifier is a variegated string of hearts. Let's just twist that to another direction so that we can have a look at this, shall we? So this one is the variegated string of hearts. It is absolutely beautiful. It has this beautiful pink coloring to the backs of the leaves. My camera's really not focusing very well because of the windows behind, so sincerest apologies for that. Let's see if I can... Are you going to find it? Oh, she's really not happy with that window light, is it? So these ones are beautiful. They have this lovely pink sort of tone to them, and then they have the white edge variegation. So that's the variegated string of hearts, and then up here... Um, if we can get back to some real... Okay. Ooh, uh, hello. Uh, so here is the regular string of hearts. And the camera's just like, hello, I don't think so. The window is more important. And I'm like, the window is not more important. So uh, here we have the regular string of hearts. I'm just going to have to kind of lock that there. So hopefully it's not too bright. And um, you can see they are a little chain they have these cute little leaves that look like little love hearts and they are just absolutely stunning. Like, I just love them. They are such a rewarding plant. If we could just, hello. Yeah, I am really sorry for the light. If you've, you know, ever filmed in front of a window, I'm sure you can also understand my frustrations. So here you can kind of see a little bit too. It's that lovely string. You can definitely see where they get their name string of hearts from. Okay, so that was a bit of a fail. <laughs> So we're going to have just, I got one of them down so I can kind of just show you up close in the camera. 
So you can kind of see it is a beautiful little plant. Uh, this one is incredibly long at the moment. I'm just gonna, here we go. String of hearts boa. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this one is incredibly long at the moment. Uh, this is a combination of a couple of different plants. Uh, one of them is a cutting that I broke recently and replanted into this pot to make it a little bit fuller. Uh, so, yes, this is a string of hearts. You know, you can Google pictures of them as well. They're very lovely, very cute, beautiful little rewarding plants with these lovely vines. And, yes, I have a variegated version here behind me as well. Uh, so what we're going to talk about first when it comes to how I care for my string of heart succulent is soil. So the type of soil I use, if you've watched my soil video, I will link that below as well. It goes into a bit more detail, but what I use is a succulent appropriate mix. So it has uh, sand, charcoal, uh, perlite and succulent store-bought mix, as well as um, if I can cut worm castings. Uh, so that is the soil that I currently have in it. If you want to know more detail on that soil, uh, go check out my soil video. It goes into much more detail about the type of soil that I use for all of my plants. Uh, but this one in particular, I keep the String of Hearts succulent in a very well draining, succulent appropriate soil mix. Nice and simple. And now I have another cat coming to say hello. Let me just pull this off. All right, so the next topic we are going to talk about when it comes to caring for your string of hearts is watering. How often should you be watering your string of hearts? Now, personally, I like to err on the side of caution and I slightly underwater my string of hearts, if I'm going to be very honest with you. Uh, I am not a big fan of overwatering them. That's part of the reason I have them in such a well-draining soil mix so that the water basically goes straight through them. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to kind of use what I call is the snap test. So I will do a video on watering soon and I'll talk a little bit about this, but basically what I want to go is I go for some of these older leaves on the chain and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to squeeze that leaf if my camera will pick up my hand I'm trying to squeeze that leaf in half and I'm trying to see if it feels like if I bend that leaf it'll snap then it has enough water and I leave it alone so a for me my string of hearts care a lot of it is just about touching the leaves and seeing how they feel uh, so this, yeah, I call it the snap test. If it feels like the leaf is going to snap clean in half, then leave it alone and don't water it just yet. If the leaves are starting to feel a little bit softer than they usually do and you're starting to feel like you can bend them a little bit, that's when I will give it a nice big deep drink. If you see the leaves completely shriveled, uh, it is very thirsty and you need to water it immediately. Uh, I would start with the bottom watering so that it can drink the water up a bit slower than a top watering that can just flood it. So uh, stick your pot in a container of water and just let it sit there for a couple of hours and then take it back out. Don't let it sit there overnight uh, because you can overwater if it has been underwatered and it can uh, cause some more damage. So be careful of that one. Uh, also, because these have big bulbs, so if you ever repot one, you'll find these bulbs that look kind of like potatoes. It's a bit funny. They look like these little tiny potatoes. They store a lot of water. So these plants don't require a whole lot of watering because they have this storage system. Uh, they are an African succulent originally. That's where they come from. If you look into the origins of the plant, which I always say is a very important thing to do because that helps you understand where it comes from and its requirements. So this one, it does have a large bulb that stores a lot of water, so you do not need to be overwatering it. Uh, if you notice that your leaves are starting to go mushy uh, and kind of melting, then you've definitely overwatered your plant, and I would recommend repotting and possibly even taking cuttings to save it entirely. Because uh, if it gets to that point, it's probably too late already. Sorry. So that is watering your string of hearts succulent. They are much more thirsty in summer uh, instead of winter as they are spring summer growers. So uh, you will notice that you will need to up your watering during your hot dry season. Uh, I still do water over winter, just not nearly anywhere near as much. 
Again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you how many times a week to water because that is completely dependent on your climate and where you live in the world and the time of year and so if you have, what your house heating is like. Like there are so many factors that can affect when you need to water. So for me, that, that test of knowing what your leaves feel like when they're full and happy and knowing what they feel like when they're thirsty is probably the most important thing you can do. Just remember, if you're putting your hands all over your plants, be sure you're washing your hands in between moving from plant to plant or you pay very, very close attention because your hands can actually transfer pests, which I will talk about a little bit later. But when doing the snap test, make sure that that is something you're aware of. If you're handling your plants, you need to be aware that it can be a pest transferer. Uh, anyway, so that is watering your string of hearts. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, next topic. How much light should your string of hearts get? Well, they are quite capable of handling a lot of light. They don't like a low light situation. If they get a low light situation, you're going to start finding that the space between your leaves here is going to end up getting quite long. That is a sign that your plant's not getting enough light. So if you're noticing that your string of hearts is starting to have really large internodal spacing, so the space between the nodes, then that is a sign that your plant needs to be moved to a sunnier spot. These can live in basically full sun. I have had some live outside in almost full afternoon sun. They have to acclimatize. Do not go like putting it straight from indoors to outside. It'll get sunburnt. But if they're slowly acclimatized, they can handle a lot of sun. Personally, my ones, they live in this window here with the rest of my plants. These get full morning sun and then they get a little bit of subsidized grow lights from these lights in the afternoon, which I currently have turned off. So uh, these do enjoy quite a lot of sun as they are a like hot outdoor succulent in Fala. Well, that's two cats ruining my videos today. Sorry, that was Vala. Uh, she ran off before um, I could get her to appear on the video. So uh, you might have seen her in some past videos, but that was Vala. And then I have a scratch on my arm from trying to help her. Cats, right? Anyway, <laughs> speaking of the cats that have appeared over and over in this video, I want to talk about the pet safety of the String of Hearts. These are not a pet safe plant and uh, they can be quite tempting to cats especially because they have that lovely dangling I'm gonna play with you effect so I always make sure that mine are whoops uh, are hanging up quite high and then when they start to get a bit long I drape them around other plants to make sure that they're not hanging low to the ground uh, they are not pet safe so be sure if you have pets that chew plants thankfully if you've probably noticed, none of mine are at all interested in any of my plants. Um, however, if you have animals that are slightly interested in your plants or you're concerned they might be and you want to own a string of hearts, I suggest putting it somewhere that your pet cannot access at all. So make sure you keep that in mind that uh, this plant is not one that your pet can chew on or eat or anything like that. Do not do it, please. Okay, so the next topic I wanted to cover when it comes to your string of hearts is pests. What sort of pests are these susceptibles or what sort of pests have I personally had issues with? Well, personally, my biggest problem I have had when it comes to caring for my string of hearts is mealybugs. Mealybugs. Uh, and also that can be a concern because they hang up high. Mealybugs prey up here. So I've had plants look okay they just looked a little thirsty so i watered them and then it didn't bounce back and i was like what's going on so i pulled down the plant and it turns out the entire top of the plant was infested with mealybugs but it was so close to the ceiling that i couldn't see it so if you do have them up high in high places make sure you're getting them down on a regular basis to actually inspect that their root system and everything on the top here is still doing good because uh sometimes they can appear healthy later on in the strings but the truth is they're actually kind of fibbing to you a 
little bit and the root system has been eaten out by mealybugs. Uh, if you do have that happen, isopropyl alcohol or hydrogen peroxide or sometimes both uh, mixed with water in a spray bottle uh, and a cotton bud, get in there, remove any bugs that you can see, spray it down, keep a good eye on it and that should take care of it. If you have more problems with them, start looking into things like systemic powders and other pesticides. But I do recommend trying to use the regular monitoring method first with isopropyl or hydrogen just because they're a little bit safer um, and a little bit better for you than bringing pesticides into your home. So yeah, that's that one. Um, personally, I have had spider mite infestations near these plants and I have not had them be uh, victims to the spider mites. So if you've had problems with spider mites on these, I'd like to hear about it because personally, I have had like full spider mite infestations and these are just sitting there going, I'm good. I'm fine. So they don't seem to be a plant that spider mites enjoy. And I think that's just because of the type of leaf. Like, you know, spider mites enjoy things like calatheas and alocasias that have that like juicy, like leaf to really norm on. These don't have that. They have these quite hard leaves and mealybugs do love succulents and these are a succulent. So it makes sense. So yeah, for best prevention is just being aware and observant and just trying to keep an eye out. I do also want to mention that, I'm hoping that you can see these on the camera. Um, let's get it up here closely. Where is one? I just had one in my line of, line of sight and then it's disappeared on me. Ah, here we go. All right, so this here, you're gonna see, I hope you can see this. Um, I don't know if you can see this, can you see this? You can see my lovely thumb that I jammed in the door, isn't that pretty? <laughs> so this here, that is good. This is not a pest. If you come across these weird sort of, they like feel very woody, uh, which is, you know, ironic given their name. Uh, so they feel quite woody and they are actually the start of bulbs. They do grow along the strings. I'm hoping I can find one here. Oh, here we go. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but they do grow along, there's one. They do grow along the strings when the strings start to get a bit longer because in nature, nature, these are tree drapers. So they sit up high in the trees, they drape down, and then these bulbs grow along the way, hoping that they're going to get wedged in another tree, can start another plant, you know, so on and so forth. So um, if you see along the line, which can also be how mealybugs can um, hide sometimes in these. So you can see, I hope you can see it. Oh, um, it's so hard to show anything on these plants, I swear. Okay, here we go. So that there, you can kind of see, it does look a little bit like a mealybug nest. Um, I can't, please, can you show your camera? Okay, there we go. So it does look a little bit like a mealybug nest. The difference is, is it's hard and it feels like, like, a, like a wood, like wood, like a twig. Um, and so if it was mealybugs, it would be soft and fluffy and webby. So, uh, do keep an eye on your little bulbs as they, uh, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, if I can find the name for it, it's on the screen now, but these little bulbs along the way, uh, just touch them. And if they are soft and fluffy, you have mealybugs. If they are hard and woody, it's fine. That is hundred percent normal. And that's what your plant is meant to do. So don't freak out. That's fine but make sure you do know the difference between a mealybug nest and um, the actual bulbs. All right, so speaking of these bulbs, we're gonna roll into our next topic, which is propagation. Now, I love the string of hearts for propagation. They're a really easy plant to propagate, I find. Uh, they have a bunch of methods that you can use to propagate them. So just grabbed the variegated one very quickly because I realized it actually has a better way of showing you one of these propagation methods. So there are a few ways that you can propagate string of hearts. I'm going to go through a couple of them now. There are cuttings, leaf, uh, actual leaf propagation, um, and then there are a couple of different ways you can propagate those depending on your preference or if you want to experiment or play around with it. So one of them is you can literally take a cutting off your plant. I would recommend somewhere where you've maybe lost some leaves. As you can see here, this got caught and lost three leaves. 
it has the start of some little bulbs. Uh, I would prefer it had some bigger bulbs because, as I was saying, those help create newer plants. So that is one option, is I could cut it here, there, and take this nice long string. Now that I would also, I would recommend if you can find somewhere along the string that has quite a large bulb growing, go for that cutting, remove the leaves in the outer area. And then I always make sure to leave my cuttings to dry for a couple of hours before I do anything with them. You wanna make sure they have a nice callus. So if you're taking a cutting, you would take the cutting, snip, let it dry for a couple of hours, and then you can either water propagate it, so you get a little jar of water, put the string in, let it sit somewhere in bright indirect light, make sure it's not getting direct sunlight or it will melt, and just give it a couple of weeks and you'll grow some roots. And once you've got a nice little root system, you can plant that up. So that's method one with a cutting. Two is you can get a pot of succulent mix that I spoke about before, and you can literally plant that cutting up to the leaves. So if you have a cutting with leaves on it, take off, I usually like to go with three. I like to go with three nodes if they are averagely spaced apart so that you have a cutting that's, you know, about the length of your fingers, about this long, at least. And then I will spiral that around in the pot, dump the soil in, so put a layer of soil, spiral the cutting, put more soil on top and just have my little leaves poking out the top and then don't water it for two or three weeks and that will grow most of the time. Um, and then also the other option is you can take that cutting and you could put it in sphagnum or perlite or whatever sort of propagation method you prefer. But I personally like to just chop them, put them in a pot of soil and just give them away to people and be like, don't water it for two and a half weeks. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, no, seriously, don't water it. And then in two, three weeks, then give it a water and it'll be great. And it always works for them. I've not had that not work for somebody. So, um... That's a nice foolproof method. Just make sure you're letting it dry for that couple of hours. So I'll cut one in the morning. I put it on my, um, I put it with my tea bags so that when I make my afternoon cup of tea, I'm just like, oh, that cutting that I uh, did before, I'm just going to pop it in the water now. So I do that. Um, and that's one of my favorite methods. Uh, otherwise, yeah, you can stick it in a jar of water and that works beautifully as well. Now, the other method, let me just pop this back so I don't drop anybody. Okay. Thank you, baby. <laughs> so the other method that I find works really, really well for propagating string of hearts is uh, using a moss tray or a moss container or a hot box or something along those lines. So here is one that I've actually been working on for a little while. Uh, what actually happened is I broke my cutting. <laughs> uh, I broke my plant. Like I was saying before, I was like, I got it caught and in something I was doing and I broke off like a huge big piece and it was kind of like that kombucha girl meme where I was just like oh I broke my plant oh I can make cuttings <laughs> um so I literally went through the entire plant and I cut off um I'll see if I can pull out a piece because they've all kind of anchored now um nope no nope, they're all grown in um so what I had was little uh oh great what i'm going to show you is on here so what i had was i cut off i don't think you can see okay i've just made a cutting so that i can show you <laughs> so what i had was the full length of string and i went through and i would go all right i'm going to snip off like that bit and that bit so i had a piece that was as long as the leaves so that the stem didn't go any longer and the leaves was kind of, you know, as big. I really hope this is showing up. Is it? Yeah. So I had this little short piece with uh, what had like a little bud, what deforms the little bud in here. And then I put them all uh, bud side down into this tray of sphagnum moss. And I have kept this one, personally, this one has been kept in a little uh, mini greenhouse but you can just keep them in a nice warm place. This one's been here for a couple of weeks with the moss staying moist. So basically if I notice the moss is a little bit dry, I will just pour some water around the edges and just let it soak it back up again. I don't bother with misting because these are a succulent variety. The misting can actually lead to um, a bit of rot. So uh, I don't mist them. I just water them from the bottom with pouring the water around the edge of the container and letting the moss drink it up. 
And as you can see here, I have lots of little baby growth coming up. I'm so excited. These ones have been in here for about a month, uh, maybe two. And you can see it's got new growth, sprouts. Uh, like I said, I was trying to pull one out to show you. And they've all grown um, bulbs. I'm going to try and see if I can maybe just get one out in the moss. Come on, Bubba. There we go. All right. So here is one. Look how cute this is. Isn't that just the cutest thing you've ever, like, oh my god, it's so cute. <laughs> so at the back here where that little cutting was just a little cutting, it has grown a bulb. I hope you can see that in the moss there. It's a bit hard to see, but in here I can feel it. Like, there is one of those hard little woody bulbs that they grow just in the back of the moss there. So, oh my gosh, it's so precious. <gasps> oh my god, you're so cute. Why are you so cute? Um, <laughs> so, a whole bunch of them have started to do that now. I'm just going to try and wedge it back in here so it's back with its friends. Uh, a whole bunch of them have started to do that here. You can see all these little, like, baby bud growths. So I made sure I chopped up that moss with a pair of scissors before I put it in there so it wasn't all long tendrils of moss. So that when it is ready to transplant, I can just take them out and put the whole lump on top of a pot and they will grow down into it. They will just kind of sit on top for a long time until they kind of grow in and get that bulb established. But once that bulb's established, it's like rock solid. The other thing you can do this method with is single leaves. So single leaves, when I say single leaf, I mean a leaf that just is like this. A leaf that has no... Um, stem piece on it it's just a leaf on its own with a little okay there we can see it all right it's just a leaf on its own with just the stick that it came off with these come about when you are taking these cuttings so you'll take the cutting and if you need to strip a couple of leaves you'll have these leaves left over don't throw them out you can also propagate these <laughs> so these ones you can also put in your sphagnum moss containers they will take a little bit longer and um i have had less success rate with them like they are more likely to rot so keep an eye on your single leaves or maybe put them in their own single tray so that you can have them on their own and keep them monitored if you prefer but i just stick them all in one i check everything so often that it really doesn't matter if something rots i notice it straight away you can see I've got a couple of single string of hearts, uh, variegated ones in there as well that came about from cutting one off for um, my partner to give to a friend and potting it up in some soil, which was just how I was talking about in that other method of just snip and pot. So yeah, they are very easy to propagate uh, and you can, like, every single one of these is going to turn into a plant now. So this is going to probably be pot up. I'm thinking just potting it up as one lump when it's done and then just having it grow out. So if you have a string of hearts that's looking a bit sparse at the top, like that um, one that I was hanging down, I don't mind when they're hanging if they're very sparse at the top, I don't really care. But if you have it on a shelf and you want it to look a little bit like this at the top, take a couple of leaves off your plant, propagate them in moss, and then you'll have that fuller top that you want to achieve. Uh, the other way of doing that is you can actually take... A longer string so this is another method of propagation so if you would like a fuller pot and you've only got like a couple of strings hanging down what you can do is show you I'm gonna just put this back and here I am getting it out again <laughs> so what um, I do quite often when I want a fuller pot on top so I want it to look more like this on top and you don't want it to look like just a couple of sad strings just hanging out. So what you can do is you get a piece that um, is a bit longer or a piece that has a bulb forming. So here has a bulb forming. So what I would do is I'd get this piece and um, without this thing in the way, you wrap it around and around and around on top of the soil. And then I would get some uh, safety pins and unfold them. Um, not safety pins, uh, paper clips, not safety pins, paper clips, <laughs> or just some small pieces of wire unfold them and then use that to pin that string that you've spiraled around into the soil and once that's pinned into the soil uh every point that has a node on it uh can be encouraged to grow in you want to keep that a little tiny bit more moist and water a little bit more than you normally would but don't overdo it again like i said 
in the watering bit, you can overwater them, so be careful of that. But um, just keep them a little bit more moist so that it helps them anchor down. I will sometimes put a bit of sphagnum moss on the top and then spiral around and then pin into that. So it helps that and then just mist the moss occasionally. But make sure you're misting in the morning so that it has plenty of time to dry and you're not encouraging rot on the succulent leaves. Um, but yes, so that, that, I think, is every method I can remember that I use for propagating a string of hearts. Uh, like I said, they're very easy to propagate and I'm looking at this naked string here going, I think I know what I'm doing with this. We're going to have a little bit of a snippy snip later, I think. <laughs> Um, so if, yeah, if you've got strings that are looking like this, this one was recently given to me by a friend who, um, gave me a whole bunch of her plants to look after and it probably got bumped in transport, I think. And that's how we've got these sort of strings that are close to the lip that are missing leaves. Uh, but if you've got a string that kind of looks a bit awkward like this and you want to kind of replicate your plant up a little bit, give it a snippy snip. Um, and that is how you'll end up with a nicer, fuller plant or... You can give more plants to your friends if you're like me and you're constantly like, here, have plant, because why not? It's a, it's a love language, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that's my video on String of Hearts Succulent uh, finished. If there is anything I've missed that you would like to have some more information on or something that I haven't covered that you need help with, please put it in the description comments below and I will do my best to answer your question if I can. Um, one more point is they don't like to get super duper cold. So if you live somewhere where it's going to get very, very cold in winter, make sure you're keeping them somewhere warm. Uh, like I was saying, they are an or they originate from Africa. They don't do cold temperatures. That is not something that they can comprehend. So, um, you know, I would just make sure that you're not letting them get too cold over winter and then um, that's probably about the only other care tip I can think of. But yes, thank you so much for watching and make sure you like and subscribe and check out my merch and do all of those things uh, and keep growing like your plants. Bye!